March 23rd, 2004. That is when GIMP 2.0.0 hit the scene. And since then, there has been incremental updates upon updates, massive feature improvements, and a bunch of different changes. And in many ways, it's a very different program from what it was back then. Even though we are still on the 2.x line, if you were to put them side by side and look at what they can do, it would be a night and day difference. Some super basic things like canvas rotation, open CL support, layer mask on groups, basic transformation tools, all of those are recent additions in the past five or so years. But lurking far off into the distance has been that 3.0.0 release. Ever since the release of GTK3, moving GIMP from GTK2, because yes, it is still a GTK2 application, a highly modified version, but still GTK2 up to GTK3. But this is kind of like uh, nuclear fusion. It's 10 years away, and then when it's 10 years later, it's still 10 years away. But much like the year of the Linux desktop, this year might actually be the year of 3.0.0. But we'll see how it goes. In the recent 2022 annual report, it went over a bunch of fun stuff being worked on, who's working on that stuff, how much work's being done, things like Gaggle and Babel, and the work being done by Linux Beaver absolutely deserves the attention for the work he did on his Gaggle operations. But most importantly, is this down here, plans for 2023. 3.0.0? I should not give dates, so don't take it as a promise. Maybe it's just a foolish dream by a foolish man. I am currently planning GIMP 3.0.0 release in 2023, or at least our first release candidates. Here I said it, if it doesn't happen, remember that it was not a promise. Nope, the fact that you've said it now means it's a promise and people are going to hold you to it. No matter what you want to do, this is the internet. There is still a lot to be done, so I hope I'm not making a fool of myself. But at some point, not being able to release just gets frustrating. Of course, we are still within acceptable development durations. GIMP 2.8 to 2.10 took six years. We are still in the fifth year since 2.10, but I really want to get it over with. Now, just to be nice, I'm going to assume that's not actually copium. It does sound a lot like copium, but I'll give you that. Another reason why I think he wants it to be done is he's really sick of people asking when it's going to be done. I'm not involved in the project, and I still see people once a week, once every two weeks, fairly regularly, asking when 3.0 is going to be done. I can only imagine how many people you get if you're actually involved in it. Now, even though that 11 year time frame might sound a bit like copium, getting it done this year isn't actually as unreasonable as you might initially think. There have been some massive achievements this year, knocking off some big things on the roadmap. Among 2022 achievements, we indeed ported away from Intel tool to get text only. This is about localizing the package so it works fine in Japanese and German and French and other languages that GIMP may or may not support. Finish the Meson build. The Auto Tools build still exists, but is now considered secondary. This is all about, you know, compiling the application. And finished the last pieces for multi layer selection. A move started early 2020, including rewriting completely the interaction in the formerly terrible align and distribute tool. One of the biggest issues GIMP has had for basically its entire lifespan is you can't grab multiple layers at the same time. You can't do operations on multiple layers. You can do operations on a layer group, but that's inconvenient. I don't want to have to go and make a group 
every time I want to do things on multiple layers, this would finally fix that. And there are a bunch of other major changes that are still a work in progress, but they're getting close to being done. Less of an over-reliance on floating selections. So you might notice if you paste an image into GIMP, it's going to be a floating layer or floating selection. This is basically a temporary layer until you convert it into a proper layer. In many cases, these aren't really needed. It's sort of used as a stopgap to doing it properly. A lot of that is going away. Native Wayland support. GIMP works mostly fine through X Wayland, but ultimately you don't want to be using X Wayland if you can get it working natively on Wayland, this is going to be better. Right now the support is a little bit wonky and there are some things that can't actually be done like color management because they're not implemented properly in Wayland yet. So if anything's going to stop the 2023 release, I would imagine it'd be that. But the roadmap has been modified before, so it can be modified again. There is a lot of work being done on the GIMP API. There's also a lot of work being done on the GTK3 port. Now, last time I used it, probably a year, maybe a year and a half ago, at that point, it was already in a fairly good state. It still needed a bit of rework for like where things were placed and just slight adjustments like that but the GTK3 port is nearly finished. And the last major change, Space Invasion. Space Invasion is the code name for the GIMP color revitalization project. A big part of that you may have heard of is the CMYK support. This wasn't really getting that much progress for quite a while. That was until they brought on a developer from the Google Summer of Code. For that event, they wanted to do some patches for GIMP. But from there, they actually became a core part of the GIMP project and are now a major driving force behind getting this working. So if all of that stuff can be done, we will see 3.0 very, very shortly. I have my doubts that this year is going to be the year we see a full release. But I hope by the end of the year, we at least at a bare minimum see a release candidate. There is a lot of changes coming to 3.0 that I really, really want to see. And from the testing I've done, it seems to work pretty well. But post 3.0 is where things are going to get really, really exciting. Originally, GIMP made a really big deal out of major, minor, and micro releases. First number being major, second number being minor, third number being micro. Nothing is changing with the major releases, but the minor and micro release model kind of limits the way they can do things. So big feature addition, let's say non-destructive filters. Those would only ever be added on a new minor release. A micro release would only be adjustments and feature changes, but nothing fundamentally different. But that's going to change. My goal for GIMP is to release more often with faster development cycles. Much less features at once, yet nice features at each release. This is something I've been pushing for ever since 2014, when I was still a newcomer. I first evoked that we should be able to publish new features, even in micro versions, in a meeting during LGM 2014. This ultimately led to our release policy change starting from GIMP 2.10.0, and this is what I want to continue pushing further. So my point is that targeting for a GIMP 3.2 somewhere in the distant future doesn't make any sense anymore. The non-destructive editing features such as non-destructive layer effects will happen, but will it be GIMP 3.2.0 or some 3.0.x version instead? We'll see. It's all just numbers anyway, we may likely break this down further in smaller releases in the end. I know a lot of developers out there will take release numbers really seriously, but it seems to have held the project back, and if it's going to be like that, it makes way more sense just to get rid of it. Well, maybe not at 3.2, 3.4, anything else like that, a lot of really cool changes are going to be coming. One of them is link layers. Basically, the layer you have in GIMP is linked to the file. So if the file changes, 
the layer changes as well. You also have things like vector layers, which does exactly what it says. It's a layer that is a vector, rather than having to import the vector and then rasterize it. Rather than having to import the vector and rasterize it at a certain size, defeating the whole point of using a vector. A proper shape tool. Currently no one is working on this, but this would allow actual shapes. Crazy. Imagine that. I did already mention non-destructive filters, but that is definitely going to be coming. Also, animation support. Not really a thing that I would ever use, but I'm sure some people are interested in doing little animations and GIFs and things like that. And I don't know why it's in this section, but auto saves. There have been a couple of occasions where I forgot to save stuff and GIMP crashed and I lost everything and it was great. That would be really nice to see. Along with that, saving your undo history. I really don't like the fact that when you close GIMP, you lose every undo step you've lost. When I added this into Vim, it was so nice to have. Macro recording. Basically recording a sequence of key presses so it can be played back at a future time. Not something that I would use super often, but if you have a workflow you want to automate, very good to see. Now, extensions is a weird one because GIMP already has a concept of extensions, but what this would be doing is making it a consistent concept, introducing a new extension file format, and then all of the extensions like brushes and themes and plugins and gaggle operations would all be using that exact same format. And most of this is already done. And there is a bunch of other changes being worked on that I didn't even touch on yet. I'd recommend going and reading the roadmap if you want to see what's being worked on, or going and checking out the GitLab to see things that are coming in a potential future update. Things that aren't really assigned to the roadmap yet, but might actually be really neat. Especially if you want to get involved in developing GIMP. If someone wants to take on one of these features, I'm sure they'd be willing to bring it in much, much quicker. On that note, even if you're not a developer, you can still get involved in the project. As features are being worked on, developers are obviously going to be testing them, but when a developer tests something, a lot of the time they're not great at spotting the issues with their own code. So if you want to go and help out, test out different features being worked on, absolutely go and do so. Go and give them fit. Go and give them your own feedback, and hopefully things can be improved. But if you don't want to get involved like that either, just go and donate to the project, and that money can be used to fund different aspects of the project. Unlike something like Critter, GIMP doesn't have anywhere near as much money coming in, they don't have these major corporate sponsors, so things are going to move in a bit of a slower fashion. But let me know, do you think that 3.0 is actually going to release this year. I hope it does. I really, really do. But I'm not gonna hold my breath. Maybe you disagree though, and you think it is gonna happen. Maybe you think it's gonna be here by March. I don't know. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you really like the video, actually no, if you like the video, go like the video. If you really like the video and want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Barrow Pay link in the description down below. Uh, that's going to be it for me and I'm out.